Hello everyone. So today we're going to go ahead and talk about how to make a scatter plot of a position versus time um, data set. So let's say I have a student named Ebenezer who's just walking down the sidewalk. Nice little chill pace. So I go ahead and put a tape measure on the sidewalk and let's say he's walking from the south to the north and I measure like every couple seconds I go ahead and take data about where his position is along the sidewalk. So I'm going to go ahead and um, write down this data that I took on my little good old notebook. So I'm going to say the time second and the distance I measured it in feet. Great. So always for tables, we're going to want to make them vertical. So like this, we do not want to do them like this. And honestly, it's not the end of the world to do it like this, but in general, we want our data to be displayed vertically, not horizontally. Cool. So, and that's just like some picky, like, I don't know, some picky thing. So I'm going to go ahead and write down the data I plotted. So I said one second, four, eight, 12, 16 were my time intervals. The distance I measured uh, was, let's see, I forgot to put my starting point. I am so sorry. At zero seconds, he was at zero, um, two, five, seven, um, two, five, seven. And 10, and then the last one was 14. Cool. So I have my data. Sometimes it's kind of nice to, if you want to like copy it in a Word document, I like making um, borders and stuff like that with my data. So I would go ahead and highlight it. You can right click it, and then you click Format Cells. And then I love putting a border around things. I like to do a thick border. So outline right here, inside. I like doing like a little thing like this. So I'm going to go ahead and click on inside. Beautiful. And then it kind of shows right here what it looks like. And then I'll click OK. Beautiful. Sometimes I like to have like a separation between my data part right here um, and this part of my table. So I'm going to go ahead and do um, Add one more format cells, and I'm just going to make that bottom thing just like this. Cool, beautiful. I got my table. One thing, sometimes it's, it's good to have a title for your table. So I'm going to go ahead and call it Ebenezer. Do, do, do. Ebenezer walking. Um, I don't know, let's call it plot. Ebenezer's walking. Um, I could come up with a better name than that, but that's okay. We'll go with that. And I'm going to go ahead and these two cells right here, I'm going to want them to be one cell just to make it look nice and pretty. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight it, right click it, go ahead and format cells. And then this is one of my favorite tricks is I'm going to go ahead and do merge cells. Um, and then I'm going to also, let's put a border around that too. So I'll just do, you can also click things here, which is so fun. Here, here, and here. And maybe I'll do, again, like the double dash below just to kind of differentiate it. Beautiful. Cool. So I got my table. So now let's go ahead and make a plot. So most of the time we're going to go ahead and do a good old scatter plot. But there's times you might want to use like a bar graph. Oh, is this the bar graph? Like all sorts of things right here. So when we use a scatter plot, I always do a scatter plot. I don't use ones like this where the lines are connected. And the reason is we don't necessarily know what's happening between like each second. I just took data for these, these seconds and these time intervals, not for like every single little thing. Um, so sometimes we'll add a best fit line later, but we're always going to use a scatter plot because that'll tell us like what this distinct set of data is. Cool, so I'm gonna go ahead and click scatter. And then I'm gonna do on this nice little beautiful chart area, I'm gonna go ahead and right click it. Okay, so I right click the chart area, I clicked select data, um, and then I'm going to go ahead and go to this uh, part right here, and I'm going to click where it says legend entrees, blah, 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 series, excuse me. I'm going to click add. Now you could type in like the series names. I think this is especially good if you have multiple sets of data, but we just have one set of data. So I'm going to go ahead. We could do it anyway, just for practice. Um, Ebenezer's um, walking, I'll call it. Cool. The x value, so that's going to be our independent variable. So that's like kind of like what we use to measure gauge at all. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and click this right here. And then this right here is going to highlight our data. So I'm going to click this little button right here on the, oopsie, excuse me. 
now actually I need to highlight it, excuse me. So I will go ahead and highlight my data right here. And then to go back to that screen, I will go right here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and highlight the Y value. So I'll click right here, left click right there, and then I'll highlight all my Y values. And then right there, and then I think I got it, okay. And then that kind of added everything in, um, your X and Y values, and then I'll just click, okay, perfect. So I got my beautiful little graph right here. So now what I'm gonna do, go ahead and do is I'm gonna add, um, we have to have axis labels, so it's important to know what's what. So I'm gonna click add, oh, beautiful. We have axis titles right here. Um, and I just typed, you just click that little box right here. And now let's go ahead and put, so the X axis was the time measured in seconds. And then the other axis was distance, so that's dependent on the time measured in feet. Perfect. So I got my beautiful graph, um, and then I have a nice little title as well. Great. So now so oftentimes I'll want to add like a best fit line. So to add a best fit line to kind of model this data, because maybe I want to extrapolate it for more pieces of information or not. Um, well, oftentimes too, it's fun to look over data. So I'll go ahead and click on a data point right there. Beautiful. And notice how it clicks on every data point. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click it. Now I'm going to click add trend line. So I'll go ahead and left click that. And oh, beautiful. It already added a trend line. So I can choose what type. So I can do, oftentimes we'll be dealing with in physics, like linear and engineering, linear data. But sometimes it might be different. It might be logarithmic. Whoopsies. Oh, can't be calculated from that. Okay. Um, so sorry, let me go back there. Um, add trend line. Um, linear could be polynomial. Um, lots of different things. So I'm going to go ahead and stick with linear because um, I assume this looks like a pretty linear data set. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to display equation on a chart just so I can see what that equation represents. And then I'm going to display the R squared value on chart. So an R squared value of one means that your data very closely resembles that best fit line. Anything close to one is pretty darn high. So we have an R squared value of like 0.98. That means our data very closely resembles that best fit line. So what I like looking at this for general best fit lines, in case you have to draw one by yourself, is always use a straight edge um, ruler, and there should be about the same number of points above and below your best fit line. So I'll just look to count to see if good old Excel did a good job calculating my best fit line. So it looks like we have one, one, two, three about above, one, two, three below. Cool, that's pretty fun. And now, whenever you're using like a data analysis and you're analyzing this data, I use this best fit line to analyze it. So if I wanna like talk about a certain point, I'm gonna go ahead and use this beautiful equation right here um, to kind of like extrapolate that data and talk about the trend as a whole. I don't wanna necessarily use individual data points um, just because this is a general thing about the data. Awesome, thanks for watching.